When does all not include all? Since God is both just and merciful, neither of these qualities can triumph over the other. God can only be merciful justly, not in spite of his justice. Thus, God could only forgive sinners because the penalty for sin was fully paid. Romans chapter 3 verses 19 to 31 And that the penalty was paid for all, making it possible for God to justly and mercifully forgive all, and not just an elect class, is declared repeatedly in Scripture, as the conscience God has given us affirms. Surely all must agree with Spurgeon's statement that we have already quoted. As it is my wish and your wish, so it is God's wish that all men should be saved. He is no less benevolent than we are. Would God undermine his own sincere desire for all to be saved by predestining multitudes to eternal torment and withholding from them the irresistible grace and regeneration without which his desire cannot be fulfilled? Of course not. We can only conclude that God does not prevent his own desire from being fulfilled. His desire is expressed in the gospel which man can believe or not believe, accept or reject. The Bible's clear language compels the reader to conclude that God loves all, desires the salvation of all, and genuinely strives to convince wicked men to repent and to accept his offer of salvation. Then why are all not saved? Clearly, men have the capability of responding when drawn by the Holy Spirit and convicted of their guilt and need, but though all are drawn, some willingly repent and believe, while others refuse. The Bible repeatedly presents a God who so loves the whole world that he sent his only Son that the world through him might be saved. John 3.16 1 John chapter 4, verse 14. And who will have all men to be saved? 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. And who is not willing that any should perish? 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Bible repeatedly presents Christ as the one who gave himself a ransom for all. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 6 who is the Saviour of all men, especially of those that believe. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. And whose death provided a propitiation for the sins of the whole world. 1 John chapter 2, verse 2. Christ calls unto all who are spiritually thirsty, hungry, and weary of their sins' heavy load. Come unto me, and I will give you rest living water, the bread of life, eternal life. That invitation has touched the hearts of the thirsty, hungry, weary, and heavy laden for two thousand years. Yet Calvinism attempts to make all such promises apply to only a preordained elect.